Hi folks, for years I've been cooling my sheds with solar power and I thought I'd make a dedicated video about it. I'll just share some of what I've learned in case it helps anybody. If you store electronic devices or anything heat sensitive in your shed, keeping it 20 degrees cooler can be a wise choice. Plus, it's a fun way to use solar power and learn new things in the process. First, to cool or ventilate your shed, you need a fan. Let's be realistic, the only way to cool a shed in the summer without an air conditioner is to try to keep the inside temperature the same as the outside. That's the best case scenario. If it's 90 degrees outside, you have 90 degree air coming in. But with no ventilation, the shed can easily reach well over 100 degrees Fahrenheit or more. Therefore, we need to move or exchange as much air as possible with the outside. That means a powerful fan. The bigger the shed, the more air you need to move or exchange. But moving any air is better than none. You can use any fan you want, but my choice has always been 12 volt car radiator fans. They are cheap, chunky, and tough fans. Fairly durable, but also quite dangerous. Watch your fingers. This season I will also be using brushless DC fans to cool my sheds. If you want to use this type of fan, I suggest avoiding the cheaper computer fans. Instead, look for more powerful and durable server and mining fans with ball bearings. Also, since those fans are smaller, you might need to use more than one to get good airflow. A typical car radiator fan can push hundreds of cubic feet per minute, or CFM, of air, as they are quite large. We're going to need a solar panel to power the fan. A smaller solar panel isn't going to cut it. We need quite a bit of current, or amps, to get that big fan spinning. So realistically, a 50 watt 12 volt solar panel would probably be the minimum. The closer you get to 100 watts, the better. And it's as simple as connecting the positive and negative wire of the solar panel directly to the positive and negative wire of the fan through a switch and a fuse if you wish. The solar panel will generate some voltage and some current will flow and the fan spins. For once, yes, it's really that simple. Some car radiator fans can be reversed to pull or push air according to your needs. This may require swapping the polarity, meaning reverse the positive and negative wires, and you may need to also remove the fan blade and turn it over. With brushless DC fans, the positive and negative wires must never be reversed. Reverse polarity is very likely to burn these electronic circuits out. A 50 watt solar panel won't operate the car radiator fan at full speed. This is actually okay. It will pull the voltage of the solar panel down pretty low, probably below its maximum power point, but nothing is perfect. I think the simplicity and convenience of this kind of technology more than makes up for any inefficiencies. In cloudy weather, you get less power, so less air will go through the fan. To overcome this situation, you can do what's called overpaneling. You can use a 100 watt solar panel or larger to ensure lots of excess power, even in cloudy conditions. But then we run into another problem. That large solar panel could force the fan to run at over 16 volts in sunny conditions. That's very hard on the brushes in the fan motor and it could heat up and burn out. One solution is to introduce some electronics. I like keeping things simple, but sometimes you have no choice. A basic PWM or pulse width modulation speed controller, or a DC-DC buck converter or regulator, can protect the fan from voltages that are too high, plus give you control over the fan speed. I have used both PWM speed controllers and DC-DC converters, and both options work, either separately or together. It's great to have full control over the fan speed anyway. Basic 12 volt car radiator fans have no electronics inside but 12 volt brushless DC fans do. For this reason, it's important to supply them with a regulated voltage not to exceed 12 volts. Exceeding the rated voltage on a brushless DC fan is very likely to burn it out. Here's an example of a golf cart DC converter. It simply takes a higher voltage from the solar panel, whatever that happens to be, and outputs no more than 12 volts DC. It regulates the excess voltage. This protects the fan from going over voltage. You can also run that regulated output into a PWM speed controller, which is what I did in one of my sheds. I can hook up any size solar panel and ensure no more than 12 volts DC reaches the fan. Plus, I can control the fan speed. An adjustable DC-DC converter shown here is another one of my favorite options. The adjustable DC converter is able to both regulate the speed of the fan and also protect from over voltage. One benefit of slowing down the fan speed, say below 10 volts DC, is that it will last much longer. My oldest fan has been going strong several seasons, in part because I don't run it at full blast all the time. DC converters and PWM motor controllers are usually overrated. For example, they might claim the device can handle 10 amps, but in reality they can't survive that long term. Also, the shed is going to be hot, further reducing the current rating of the device. A typical car radiator fan might pull 5 to 10 amps, but running it at a lower speed will reduce the power draw. 
A DC amp meter can be used to check if you're not sure how many amps the fan uses. Installing the fan requires some hands-on DIY work. You need to have a large enough opening in the shed to ingest cool air, and also sufficient exhaust vents so that the fan is able to push hot air out of the shed easily. It's important to seal around the fan so it doesn't leak air, reducing pressure and wasting its efforts. The hottest air in your shed is of course up high near the ceiling or roof. This superheated air sits up there as the shed gets hotter and hotter. What I suggest is to pressurize the shed with a fan so the hottest air is pushed out from the top of the shed, usually through vents up near the roof somewhere. You can see on one of my sheds there are vents in the gable ends allowing me to exhaust that hot air by forcing cool air in through the window. Your shed may be different, but since mine has vents up high, I want that superheated air to be pushed out first while cooler air comes in near the ground level. This is where most of the heat sensitive stuff I have in my shed is stored anyway. Of course, you could use the fan in the opposite direction to pull air out via the fan. Some thought and design work may be required for your particular shed cooling situation. Let's now take a look at some of my shed cooling projects. Here you can see one of my fans is just mounted to a piece of a board and I painted it black so it blends in better. The board is then placed into an open shed window which has a screen. This setup has worked well for me for years and I can remove it when the season is finished. Using what I had laying around it cost me around $20 to make. I never intended to run my fan at over 12 volts DC and I wanted to experiment with pulse width modulation circuitry. So the solar panels are fed into a fuse and a golf cart DC converter first and finally to the PWM motor speed controller. Of course I could use an adjustable DC DC converter by itself, more on that later. Here's some footage from my latest shed cooling project. My main shed gets very hot midsummer, and I found that I was pushing my 12 inch radiator fan too hard during those months. So I will add more ventilation in the second window. For this project I chose to use brushless DC server and mining fans. Well I'm out in my workshop and for my next project I need to find a piece of wood or a board to mount my brushless DC fans in that I'm going to be using in my shed. Now I could not find a piece of particle board that suited me. However, there is one thing I have a lot of, and it's foam board. This is 2 inch thick R10 foam board insulation. If you're interested, I have a video where I installed this in my metal building or my solar workshop. I have a lot of scraps and a lot of offcuts. I might as well use these pieces for something. To cut the foam board, I'm going to use my Bosch barrel grip jigsaw and the special foam board cutting blade. If you want to see that blade in action, just check out my foam board video, which is linked in the description. I'm going to go ahead and plug a solar panel feed into it and see what this thing does. Okay, that does pretty good.
Yeah, that'll do it. Okay, I'm not going over 10 volts. That's quite enough. Wow. I gotta say, this is a very powerful fan. It's the most powerful 120 millimeter fan I've ever had. It's ridiculous. Let's just see if I can hit 12 volts or near 12 volts. I think this is ready to put in my shed in the other window. In the peak of the summer, it gets so hot in my main shed, I really need that extra air. And I think that this new fan will swing the balance in my favor. I'm going to try running it off of two different solar panels. And of course the finishing touch is you need your silver knob. Cooling your shed with solar is a great way to learn about solar energy in a hands-on and interesting way. Don't be afraid to give it a try, just be careful with those fan blades. I hope this video helps you out. If you have any questions or feedback, please be sure to let me know. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.